The Scarlet Letter, The Godfather, Alice in Wonderland. When popular books make it to the big screen, there is a lot at stake. Now, one of the latest to test the waters is The Life of Pi. Just what makes an adaptation work? Well, we are going to talk to our own Wall Street Journal film critic, Joe Morgenstern, who has put together his list of the most inspired to most idiotic books turned movies. Now, Joe, you got a sneak preview of The Life of Pi. Now, without tipping your hand on the review, tell us a little bit about what you thought. Well, you know, if I didn't think well of the movie, Wendy, I, I, I wouldn't step on my own review for it. But, uh, it's one of those books that people say wrongly can't be made into a movie. Of course it can. It was begging to be made into a movie. The book is in good hands, let us say. All right. Well, I think we got a little bit of a snippet there. Now, you have some from the past. You picked some current and some not so current films that have done well when they've gone from book uh, to film. Let's start with the most inspired ones, The Godfather, parts one and two. You think these are particularly inspired? I do, and everybody does. I think you'll get no argument on Godfather one and two being the absolute model of a novel to screen. And it illustrates a principle which is that novels, and particularly big, sprawling, episodic novels, make the best source material for movies. I always worry when I see a movie that uh, has a credit saying based on a short story. I think I'm gonna come out hungry. <laughs> All right, Fred, that's a very good point. Now, From Here to Eternity, you also found this one inspired. This, this book had a lot going for it. It won the National Book Award. It was the debut novel of James Jones. Tell us a little bit about why you put this in the inspired category. Jones's novel was a sprawling, I think it was seven, eight or nine hundred pages, but it took a great humanist director like Fred Zinnemann uh, and a great Hollywood writer like Dan Taradash to pull all of this into not only filmable form, but to cast it brilliantly. The Easy A, now this is another one you put in into the inspired category. This is Will Gluck's contemporary version of A Scarlet Letter. A lot of drama there. Why did you like it so much? What I loved about it was that here's a, a movie that takes complete liberties with the book, The Scarlet Letter, Nathaniel Hawthorne. But it takes smart, funny liberties in the same way that uh, Amy Heckerling did with Clueless, which was based on uh, Emma. Um, this is rather than a, a, a woman who goes through life with uh, the, the adulteress's A on her, on her breast, uh, this is a young kid, a high school kid, Olive Pendergast, played by the sublime Emma Stone, who brags about her sex life that never happened and ends up being branded as a harlot, but she's a faux harlot in a, in a movie that's a true wonder of a comedy. For me, one of the most painful book adaptations into a film, uh, as it was for many people, was in fact Bonfire of the Vanities, a brilliant book in my opinion, many other people's opinions by Tom Wolfe, but it was so widely panned as a movie that it inspired its own book, The Devil's Candy, about just how bad it was making that film. Let's move into what you thought was idiotic, uh, Joe. Alice in Wonderland, talk us through that one. Alice in Wonderland, the Tim Burton version, had all of the vast apparatus of the digital age at its command. All of these marvelous effects and Johnny Depp playing a Jack Sparrow version of the Mad Hatter. And yet there was no magic. It was basically a very earnest Disney movie. Uh, a coming-of-age movie uh, in the standard Disney fashion about a heroine who emerges from her difficult experiences stronger and wiser. Now, speaking of magic, Joe, Cloud Atlas, this is a new film. You talk about sprawling. How do you begin to translate something as complicated as Cloud Atlas, the novel, into film? And it seems to me you think they have not done that. This is another novel that was said to be unfilmable. And in this case, they were right. The real problem was that Cloud At Atlas, the David Mitchell novel, was a, a time-traveling novel. Uh, somewhat about the theme of reincarnation, but not entirely. And this was not just a time-traveling movie, 
It was a time hopping and leaping movie that every, I don't know, 45 seconds it seemed, as soon as there was any danger of the audience getting involved in a particular segment, we would hop somewhere else. And finally, Joe, on your idiotic list, the adaptation <laughs> of Anna Karenina. Now that novel was widely regarded as, as, as just sort of the pinnacle almost in, in, in realist fiction. What did you think about this adap latest adaptation? Well, let me say, Wendy, on this one, I regret the, uh, the category idiotic because uh, Joe Wright, who directed Atonement, who's a very gifted director, uh, made a brave and completely wrong-headed attempt to adapt Anna Karenina by reminding the audience of the artifice of film, but not just the artifice of film, reminding the audience by putting it all into artificial theatrical trappings. An alienation, an intentional alienation device to remind the audience of something it doesn't need to be reminded of, that movies are, hey, artificial. Interesting. All right, Joe Morgenstern, he is our Wall Street Journal film critic. You can hear from him every Friday in the Wall Street Journal. He's even won a Pulitzer Prize. Joe, we love having you on Off Duty. Thank you so much.